What's up, everybody? Nick O'Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw the great Ken Griffey Jr. become the first player, even though it was in an All-Star game, to hit the warehouse in Baltimore on the fly with a home run ball. We don't have anything quite as special as that today, but we do have more Wimbledons to talk about, a couple of no-hitters, and one home run milestone. So if you all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. We start out today in 1881 at Wimbledon on the men's side. William Renshaw defeated defending champion John Hartley 6-0, 6-1, 6-1 to win his first of six straight Wimbledon titles and seven overall and seven Grand Slam single titles. Four years later in 1885, remain at Wimbledon on the men's side, make it five straight Wimbledon titles for Renshaw, and his second consecutive year of defeating Herbert Lawford in the finals, this time 7-5, 6-2, 4-6, 7-5. One year later at the 86 Wimbledon men's final, William Renshaw once again would defeat Herbert Lawford for his third straight year, 6-0, 5-7, 6-3, 6-4. This would also make it six consecutive Wimbledon titles for Renshaw of seven overall and seven majors on the single side. Nine years later in 1895, remain at Wimbledon on the men's side, Wilfred Baddeley defeated Wilberforce Eves 4-6, 2-6, 8-6, 6-2, 6-3 with the comeback for his third Wimbledon singles title and his final major of his career. Move to Major League Baseball but stay in the 1800s in 1896. Ed Delahenty becomes the second Major League ball player to hit four home runs in one game. However, this would be a bit of a rarity though because he would become the first player to hit four home runs and have his team lose. But also, he is only one of two players in MLB history to have hit four home runs while their team loses. This was also special for another reason. Delahenty became the only player in Major League history to hit four home runs with two of them coming as inside the park home runs. But again, the Phillies would lose 9-8 to the Chicago Colts. Nothing on Delahenty. He had 7 RBIs on the day. Did all he could. But now we move into the 20th century. We start off in 1924 at the Olympics. Albin Stenrus would win the Olympic marathon with a time of 2 hours, 41 minutes, 22.6 seconds to win the gold medal and finish 6 minutes ahead of the second place. We go from an Olympic gold medal to a world record two years later in 1926. Pavo Normi runs the world record 3,000 meters in 8 minutes, 20.4 seconds, breaking his own world record, and this one would stand for about six years before it was broken. Four years later in 1930, the first ever football World Cup competition would begin in Uruguay, and Uruguay actually would win the first World Cup competition. Back to Major League Baseball in 1934, Babe Ruth would just add to his career home run record and make another milestone, hitting his 700th home run off of Tommy Bridges of the Detroit Tigers in the third inning. Ruth was on his last ledge at this point. He would only hit 14 more in his career, but this was one of the last home runs that he would hit with the New York Yankees. Moved to golf now in 1941 at the PGA Championship, Vic Gezi wins his only career major title over defending champion. Byron Nelson, nearly 20 years later in 1962 at the British Open, Arnold Palmer with a score of 12 under would win his second consecutive Open, six strokes ahead of runner-up Kel Nagel to win his sixth of seven majors. Back to Major League Baseball in 1963, future Hall of Fame pitcher Early Wynn would notch his 300th and final MLB victory at age 43. At the time, Wynn was the 14th pitcher to do so. On the day, not a great day, 5 innings pitched, 6 hits allowed, 4 earned runs, 3 walks, 3 strikeouts, but it was enough to earn the victory in the team's 7-4 win. We move back to golf, stay in 1963 though, at the British Open, Bob Charles with a score of 3 under, wins his only career major after a 36-hole playoff, 8 strokes ahead of runner-up, Phil Rogers. Stay at the British Open in 1968. Gary Player, with a score of one over, would win his second of three Open titles, two strokes ahead of Bob Charles and Jack Nicholas. This would be the fifth of Player's nine major titles. 
And hey, look at that. 1974, we stay with Gary Player at the British Open. With a score of two under, he would win his third Open Championship, four shorts ahead of runner-up Peter Oosterheis to win his eighth of nine majors. We stay with golf, but go to the women's side in 1980 at the U.S. Women's Open. Amy Alcott, with a score of four under, would win nine strokes over runner-up Hollis Stacy to win her second of five majors. Four years later, we have a world record in the pole vault. Sergey Bubka of the USSR would set a record of 5.9 meters or 19 feet, four and one quarter inches, and he would hold this record just over a month. Still a record, though. Back to Major League Baseball in 1991, the Baltimore Orioles would have a combined no-hitter against the Oakland Athletics in a 2 to nothing victory, started off by Bob Malachi, 6 inch pitch, 3 walks allowed, 3 strikeouts. Then Mike Flanagan came in, 1 inch pitch, 1 walk allowed, Mark Williamson, 1 clean inning, Greg Olson closed it out, 1 inning pitch, 2 strikeouts, 2 end the game and get the no-hitter for the Orioles in the 2 to nothing victory. But we moved back to golf in 1997 at the Senior Players Championship. Larry Gilbert, with a score of 14 under, would win his only career major title, three strokes ahead of Isao Aoki, Bob Dixon, Jack Keller, and Dave Stockton. Also in 97, at the U.S. Open on the women's side, Allison Nicholas, with a score of 10 under, would win her only career major, one stroke ahead of runner-up Nancy Lopez. Move up to 2001, and the IOC voted to award Beijing the 2008 Summer Olympic Games. Two years later, back in golf, at the Senior Players Championship in 2003, Craig Stadler, with a score of 17 under, would win his first of two Champions Tour majors, three strokes ahead of runners-up Tom Kite, Jim Thorpe, and Tom Watson. Ten years later in 2013, Tim Lincecum of the San Francisco Giants would record his first no-hitter as they would defeat the Padres in a 9-0 victory. Lincecum on the day, 9 innings pitched, 4 walks allowed, 13 strikeouts in the no-hitter. One year later, we moved to the FIFA World Cup Final, which saw Germany going up against Argentina, and Germany would end up getting the victory after a 113th minute game-winning goal by Mario Goetze to give Germany the 1-0 lead and the final score and giving them their fourth title. Also in 2014, at the U.S. Senior Open, Colin Montgomery, with a score of 5-under, would win one stroke ahead after a three-hole playoff with Gene Sowers. Finally in 2014, at the British Open on the women's side, Mo Martin, with a score of 1-under, would win her first major title, one stroke ahead of Shen Shen Feng and Suzanne Pedersen. We moved back to Wimbledon in 2018, and Kevin Anderson would defeat John Isner 7-6, 6-7, 6-7, 6-4, 26-24 in the longest semifinal in Wimbledon history. It's 6 hours and 36 minutes. Kevin Anderson would go on to the final. He would end up losing, though, to Novak Djokovic. Finally, we have two events in 2019. We start off at Wimbledon. On the women's side, Simona Halep defeated Serena Williams 6-2, 6-2 to win her first Wimbledon singles title and her second of two majors. Finally, in 2019, in baseball, after Atlantic League MLB partnership rule changes, Southern Maryland Blue Crabs outfielder Tony Thomas would become the first player in professional baseball history to steal first base in a 7-2 win. Basically, if the ball was not caught, you were able to steal first base whenever you wanted to, but you could get thrown out. On a 1-0 pitch, a ball went to the backstop, Thomas decided to take off, he would be safe, making it the first time in baseball history a player has stolen first base. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names, I also apologize. Later this week, you all should be seeing some prediction videos for the MLB from me. I look forward to you seeing them. I want to hear your feedback on them, what you all think will be happening in this upcoming season. But until then, I'm Nick O'Dwyer for the 10th inning. See ya.